the blood. In the old days, a poor Kazakh lived in the steppe. He had four sons. It was hard for them to live. They were hungry all the time. And now they once had to slaughter their last ram. The family ate half immediately at dinner and left half in their cauldron the next day. Going to bed, the father announced to the family, The rest of the meat tomorrow will be eaten by the one who sees the best dream. The next day in the morning, the sons began to tell who had seen what in a dream. I pastured a huge flock of the rich man's sheep, said the eldest son. I got the first place in Kokpa, boasted the second. I married the Khan's daughter, said the third. I also married the Khan's daughter, interrupted the fourth son, the young boy Bekbolat. I became a Khan and then I found you. You all wandered around the villages and begged. I milked sheep in a dream, inserted the mother. Father beat Bekbolat for a bad dream and drove him away. And he himself said that in a dream he flew under a cloud on a snow-white winged horse to par. The dream of the old man seemed to his wife and sons the best. The father ate the remaining meat alone. Pepolat left his father's yard and went wandering from one owl to another. Once a young man stopped at the last yard and heard how an old man and old women were grieving that they had no children. If Creator sent us some orphan, the old man said, we would shelter him and adopt him. War that would be happiness for us. Pekbalat became glad and entered the yard. The host began to ask him who he was, where he came from and where he was going. I am an orphan, the young man answered. I go around the villages and collect alms. The elders looked at each other and said to the guest, It was Creator who heard our prayer and sent you. Stay with us and be our son. Pekbalat happily agreed. He stayed with good people and began to help the old man pasture sheep and fish. Once Pekbalat went fishing, he caught such a huge fish that he could not pull it out. And old men and an old women came to help. They dragged to the three of them and also could not do anything. You, hold the bait and don't let the fish in. He sent his wife home to prepare everything for cooking and he jumped on a horse and galloped to a neighboring village. 
to call people for help. As soon as the old man and the old woman left, a fish of unprecedented size appeared from the water and spoke in a human voice. Let me go, blood. I will not forget your service and help you in difficult times. How can you help me? Bekbalad asked. You will sail away, and I will not find you. And you pull out one scale for me, the fish answered. Light it. When you need my help, I will come. Bekbalad tore out the scale and set the fish free. The old man returned with the jiggets. Seeing their approach, Bekbalad threw the fishing rod into the water. Where is the fish? asked the old man. Couldn't resist, and it left. The old man became terribly angry. He beat at Bekbalad and kicked him out of the house. Bekbalad went again to wander from one all to another. He met once on his way a camel with golden hair. The wolf was chasing him. The camel ran up to Bekbalat and said, Save me, I'll be useful to you. Bekbalat led the wolf away and the camel said, Pull out one hair from my wool. When you need me, light it up. I'll be there. Bekbalat went Further, he sees two eagles are flying, and a bidai bird is chasing them. The eagles flew up to Begbalat and asked, Save us, we will be useful to you. Begbalat drove away the bidai bird and helped the eagles out of trouble. The eagles said to the youths, Hear our feathers, and when you need our help, light them. We will fly to you right away. Big Blood snatched a feather from the eagles and went on his way. He sees a fox running towards him, and a golden eagle flies after her. The fox ran up to Begbalat and begged him, Save me from the golden eagle. I'll be nice to you too someday. Begbalat saved the fox and she tells him, Pull one hair of my fur. When you need me, light it up. I won't keep you waiting. Begbalat pulled out a hair and went on. He walked for a long time and finally saw the village. The young man went into the last yard where a childless old man and old women lived. They liked Bekbalat and they left him instead of their son. Bekbalat began to live with them and help with the housework. Several years passed and he turned into a slender and handsome jacket. Once a rumor spread through the step that the beautiful Karayu, the daughter of Khan Akbzao, wanted to get married without a bright price. Big Balad began to ask people, Is it true? It turned out the rumor was correct. 
beauty Karayu sets only one condition for her groom. He must be able to hide from her three times. And if Karayu does not find him at least once, then she will marry him without a bright price. And if she finds him all three times, he will be he will lose lose his head. Many people have already died by the hands of the beauty. But still new daredevils appeared who wanted to try their luck. Big Ballad decided to go to Karayu. New parents did not let him in for a long time, but he insisted on his own and left. Karayu, seeing Big Ballad, said, You will hide from me three times, and I will look for you. If I find it, I'll cut off your head. Good, answered Big Ballad, but not just three times, I want four times. Karayu agreed. Big Ballad came out of the palace, lit the camel's hair. In an instant, a camel came running, and Big Ballad told what he needed from him. Sit on me, suggested the camel, and rushed to the ends of the world beyond the Arctic Sea. He hid Big Ballad in a dark forest. But Karayu called out, Big Ballad, you rode on a camel to the ends of the world beyond the Arctic Sea and you are sitting under a tree in a dark forest. Yes, answered Big Ballad. Jigit appeared in the palace and admitted that he lost his time. Big Ballad began to hide for the second time. He went out of the palace and lit the feathers of the eagles. Once the eagles flew in, Big Ballad told him what he needed. The eagles puted the boy on their wings and ascended to the seventh heaven. But Karayu called out again. Big Ballad, come back. You flew to the seventh heaven on eagle wings. Yes, answered Big Ballad, and appeared next to the Khan's daughter. He admitted that he lost the second time. Again, the jigit came out of the palace and set fire to the fish scale. Immediately before him appeared the same fish that he released into the sea. Big Blood told why, why he called her. The fish swallowed Jigit and sank to the bottom of the ocean. There she hid behind a large stone, and again Karayu gasped. Big Blood, I see you behind a large stone at the bottom of the ocean, where the fish took you. Come out. Big Blood became sad. Death hung over his head. He went out for the last time and lit the fox hair. The fox immediately came running. Big Blood told her his misfortune. 
do not be sad. We will outwit the beautiful Karayu, the fox reassured him. When at the appointed hour she screams, Pekbalat, I don't see you, be silent. Then she will say, I Ming has been dug from west to east, but you, Pekbalat, are not there either. After that, respond and come out of your hiding place. Having said this, the fox dug a huge hole, which began right next to the sunrise and ended where the sun was setting. This hole passed just under the throne of Karayu. Now, you stay here. Don't go anywhere, lie down and don't move. And do not forget to follow my advice. The fox said goodbye and went her way. At the appointed hour, the beautiful Karayo looked everywhere and, after not finding Bekbalat anywhere, shouted, Bekbalat! I don't see you. And Begbalat is silent. Repeats Karayu. Begbalat, I don't see you. Jigit does not respond this time either. Karayu said, I Ming was dug from west to east. Begbalat, you are not even there. Pekbalat this time responded, No, I am right here. And he appeared in front of the Khan's daughter from under her throne. In her pride, Harayu looked everywhere but never looked at her feet. That's why she lost. After that, Harayu married Pekbalat. So Pekbalat became Khan. He sought out his poor parents and brothers who were in great neediness. Well, father, does my dream seem to have come tr true? Big Balad asked the old man. Yes, you had the best dream then, the father agreed. You should have eaten the meat. The father was satisfied with his son and died, having lived to a ripe old age. The brothers of Begbalat married beauties and lived happily near their wise brother, whom the people loved for justice.